Hi there, this is Mar Haddad. In this lecture, I have to start speaking about bridging. So I have to explain what is the bridging exactly on the Microtech routers. And then I have to do this lab, which you can see we have seven points to do. But before I start doing those points, let me just explain to you what is the bridging and what is the main functions of the bridging. Then we come back to the points and start doing them. So what is bridging? Let's consider we have this router board, okay? We have this haplite, which has five interfaces. This is the interface for internet, and then we have those four interfaces, correct? Now, when you configure bridging on the Microtech router, what you can do, you can make, for example, one bridge interface. So you just create this bridge interface, which is actually a virtual interface, it's not physical. And what you do, you put, for example, the ports of the uh, Microtech uh, router inside this bridge interface. For example, we take port number two, number three, number four, and number five. So those ports, okay? Because the first port is for the upstream router. It's the uplink, the one which we are connected to the internet from it. So we put inside of this uh, bridge interface two, three, four, and five. So what will happen in this case, those ports will behave like switch ports. For example, you have to think that it's like a switch now. And uh, from uh, the Microtech on uh, the version 6.41 plus, then uh, what they have uh, done, they have created something we call the hardware offload in order to allow the packet to go via those uh, ports on uh, using the switch chip without it goes to the CPU. That makes uh, things to go faster. So when the frame want to go from one uh, port to another, which are inside the bridge port, then it doesn't have to go to the CPU of the router. It will go inside the switch chip and uh, that makes uh, things uh, much faster. So what is the benefit of this? The benefit is, let's consider that you create here on uh, this interface, you have the internet. So here you have internet. And then on uh, those uh, four switch the ports, what you do, you have a bridge interface. So you do the, uh, the NAT and you do the route and everything. Then you have internet. Then in this case, the if you put a cable on a port number two, then uh, for your PC, for example, you can get internet. If you put on port number three, you can get internet. Port number four, you have internet. Port number five, you have internet. So you have to consider it exactly it's like a switch. Okay, so remember when you have a switch, you have a router and then you have a switch here and then you have your PCs. Wherever you put your cable on the switch, then you have internet because the router is the one giving the internet. So it's the same thing we can can happen over here. So that's one of the function of the bridge which makes the inter the internet ports behave as switch port. The second thing that you have to think of is that normally when we say a bridge and the, the network basics, they say that bridge means you are bridging two different technology together. For example, if you have wireless and if you have ethernet, then what you can do, you can put, uh, you can bridge them together, and then in this case they can communicate to each other. Okay, and uh, that's what uh, it's saying here. You have to on the bridge, you can bridge two different network technology like Ethernet and wireless to be as one network. So what does it mean? Let's consider that we have on this router, and actually it's a haplite. It has wireless. So this is uh, the wireless. It's an interface WLAN. So what you can do. You have put uh, uh, Ethernet 2, 3, 4, and 5 inside this bridge. What you can do also, you can add here the WLAN also inside this bridge. That means that the users who are going to connect to the wireless, they also can get the internet service because they are inside the bridge. Of course, you have to configure the WLAN to be uh, active. So you have to make it active as an interface. But what will happen here that you have to consider that port two, three, four, five, and WLAN, all those ports, they are like one network. Okay. So that's also something you have to remember on bridging that you can bridge two different networks to each other. So as a summary, a bridge, it is uh, to put all ports uh, which are on the same network, then uh, like Ethernet, they can behave like switch port. And then normally we say also on the network basics that switch is a multi-port bridge. Okay, so that's why we have to think of the multi-ports that are behaving like a switch. And then also you can put another technology like wireless. You put it also in the bridge with the, with the technology, which is the Ethernet that we have port from 2 to 5. And then in this case, you can think that it is one network. So this is the main thing of the switch. And this is uh, the main concept. And this is what you can apply on the Microtech router. So let's go now back to the points and start applying what we have now learned on the lab.
Point number one, configure router one to provide internet service to your PC. So before I do that, let's go. Uh, first, I have to put the picture of the lab. You can see it. But also, let's go to the lab scenario to explain what I have in this lab scenario. So what I have done, I have reset the configuration on the router. So router one doesn't have any configuration at this moment. OK, and uh, I just have a cable connected from uh, my PC to Ethernet uh, two of uh, the MicroTik router. And also I have Ethernet one connected to the ISP. So now what I need to do, I have just to make the router one to be connected to the internet. So that's first point. I just will have to go fast because you already learned it from the previous labs when we made the, the uh, lab of connecting the MicroTik router to the internet and provide internet service. But uh, just because we need to have router one to be connected to the internet, then I will go and uh, this point started doing it and then uh, we'll see what we have to do later. So this is router one. It has no any configuration on it. It has reset. So uh, we are working on a blank configuration. We need to make it uh, connected to the internet first. I would like uh, to go and change the identity and make it router one. I will go fast on this point because again, you already know how to do that. So first thing I will have to go to IP, the HTTP client and ask on uh, the interface, which is ethernet one to receive the uh, the HTTP to be able to go to the upstream so i'll say yes and now we see it is bounded and now we should have internet if i ping google.com now my router is able to go to the internet that's fine now my router needs to provide internet so what i have to do i will go to the ip address I'm not going to configure now the DHCP server. I just want to put an IP of 192.168.88.1/24 on the interface of the one connect to my PC, which is Ethernet 2. And um, then what I still need to do actually is to do the NAT. So uh, I go to IP firewall NAT and here the source NAT and I will leave everything uh, the same and then masquerade and then I will say OK and uh, that's what I need to do. Now I will check if my PC now has internet. First let's check if we have IP addresses on uh, the PC so uh, I'll go from here and because we didn't enable the HTTP so we have to put IP address manually so I'll go to the TCP IP version 4 and then from here I'll put the IP 192.168.88.2 as it's saying in the graph, I will say what is the gateway. So it is the router and don't forget to put the DNS. And then I will say, okay, okay. And now we can see it is saying it's connected. Let's try now to see if I can go to, if I can ping to Google. So ping google.com. And here we go. We can see that my PC now is connected to the internet. Point number one is done. Point number two, we have to create a bridge interface and put inside this bridge interface the uh, interfaces which are Ethernet 2, 3, and 4. Okay, very good. So let's do that. How to create the bridge interface? We have to go from here, we have the bridge. Okay, you click on it. And then you click on bridge and you say, plus I want to create a bridge interface. You can give it the name you want. I will leave it the bridge one, that's fine. And then I will say that I'll have to put inside of it because actually, if we go to the interfaces, I have Ethernet 1, which is going to the uplink, and then I have Ethernet 2, 3, and 4. So I'll put 2, 3, and 4. 2 is the one which is on my PC, then I'll put 3 and 4 also. All right, so let's do that. So I'll go here and I will add Ethernet 2, and I will add Ethernet 3, and I will add Ethernet 4. So that's it. That's how you can configure the bridge. You just have to create it and then you put inside of it the ports. And now those ports, they are behaving like switch ports. And you can see you, there is an H over here and that's for the hardware off offload. And you can, if you want, you can check that. The hardware offload is the one that I say, said to you that on the version 6.41 plus, then uh, this is enabled. So you don't have any more what we had before the master and the slave ports. So uh, you have hardware offload and now the ports, they can send to each other the uh, frames without really going the, the frame to go to the CPU of the router, which makes things much faster.
Point number two is done. Point number three. Now we have to change the IP from Ethernet 2 interface to the bridge interface and check if you have Ethernet service. So what uh, we have done now is that we have an IP on the Ethernet 2 interface. We have to change it, put it on the bridge interface because then I can move the cable from Ethernet 2 to Ethernet 3 and to Ethernet 4 and then I still have Internet. Okay, so that's what I need to do. I'll go to the uh, here to the MicroTik router and uh, from here I'll have to go to IP address and instead of putting the IP on Ethernet 2 now we have to say it is on bridge 1 and which has inside of it the bridge has Ethernet 2, it has mm -hmm. Ethernet 3 and it has Ethernet 4. Alright, so I'll say okay. Now we need to check if we still have Ethernet. So let's uh, open the ping command again and uh, I will say to ping google.com minus t and you can see that the ping is working without any problem. Point number three is done. Point number four, move your cable to Ethernet 3 and Ethernet 4. Do you have Internet service? So at this time, my cable is connected to Ethernet 2 and uh, I have the ping is still working. So if I, we make a review, if we go back here, what I have done, I have created a bridge interface. So inside this bridge interface, I put Ethernet 2, Ethernet 3 and Ethernet 4. So Ethernet 2 is the one which I'm connected to it physically. You can see my PC is connected to it physically. Now what I need to do, this is Ethernet 3 and this is Ethernet 4. I have to move this cable and connect it to Ethernet 3. And then Ethernet 3 is inside the bridge and I have to see if I still have Internet. And then I will remove this cable and connect it to Ethernet 4. Ethernet 4 is inside the bridge and then I'll still have to see if I still have Internet service because we are all having those ports inside a bridge interface which is like the main bridge for them. Okay, so you have to think that's the bridge interface where all the ports are inside of it. So let's do this experiment. Now if I go back to the ping, I see that I'm on Ethernet 2 and the ping is working. I will move the cable now. So this cable, I take it out now and you can see it's saying general failure. And now I put it on Ethernet 3. So I just put it on Ethernet 3 now and uh, let's have a look. So request signed out and here we go. You can see that the Internet is working again. All right. Now I move it from Ethernet 3. So it's out now and uh, I put it now on Ethernet 4. And here we go. You see that now we have Internet also on Ethernet 4. So no matter what you do, you put it on Ethernet 2 or Ethernet 3 or Ethernet 4, doesn't matter anymore because those ports are inside the bridge and you can see that the Internet is working. I will move it back now and put it on Ethernet 2. Point number four is done. Point number five, configure the WLAN to be active and added to the bridge. So as I said before, you can also make a bridge between two different technologies. So we have the Ethernet ports are on inside the bridge. Now I need to add the WLAN. WLAN is different than Ethernet, but you will see that it's going to work also. So we have to make it active, the WLAN, and then we have to add it inside the bridge. So let's do that. We go to the router. And uh, I will close this. Oh, let's keep it open here. And then I will go from here to the interface. Interfaces, we go to WLAN 1. And uh, on WLAN 1, the only thing that you need to do is just to say, of course, uh, I have to speak later about the, the wireless. But for now, we can just say access point to bridge. And we, we will leave everything the same. Of course, it doesn't have now a password. So anyone who will connect with my wireless, he will be able to go to the internet. But it's for a lab now, so that's fine. I will leave everything as it is. Okay, what you can do also here is, uh, uh, for example, th this thing that you may do is to select your country. So uh, in my case, I'll put uh, the Netherlands. So that's uh, also preferably to do. And then I will say, okay, and I will make this wireless active. So now my wireless interface card, it is active. And now what I need to do, I have to add it inside this bridge. So to do that, I will go again to the bridge here, to the port. And then I will say, I want to add WLAN inside this bridge. And then I will say, okay. But look in WLAN, you don't have the hardware offload because hardware offload is only between the ethernet ports. Okay, because there are the, uh, the uh, ports which are connected to this switchboard which is inside the MicroTik router. But WLAN doesn't have the hardware offload. You can see there is nothing here called hardware offload. Uh, while if we go to Ethernet uh, 4, you can see hardware offload. All right, 
So that means that the packet between the WLAN and the Ethernet ports, it has to go to the CPU. Point number five is done. Point number six. Now we need to configure the DHCP server on the bridge. Why we need to do that now? Because now anyone who wants to connect, so we have on this router now wireless. All right. So anyone which is here, a laptop wants to connect to the wireless internet service, then uh, he will associate to, uh, to this one, but then he needs to get an IP address because normally on wireless, we don't put the IP address manually, which should be provided automatically. So that's why we have to configure the uh, DHCP server to be on uh, the bridge interface and not on the WLAN because WLAN is inside the bridge interface. So we create a uh, DHCP server. And then in this case, the wireless users, but also the wired users, they can get the IP via the DHCP server. Actually, they will get IP from the DHCP server. Okay, so let's do that. We'll go to the router and uh, from here, I'll have to go to IP DHCP server. And remember, we go to DHCP setup and now we configure it on the bridge. And then I will say next. It will say, okay, this is the address uh, space, fine. This is the gateway, yes, because that's the IP which I put it on uh, the bridge interface. You can see 192.168.88.1. So that's the gateway. Next, you want the IP from dot two onto the dot two five four. So yes, the DNS and that's fine. Ten minutes, and that's it. So I have configured now the DHCP server on the bridge interface. You can see the interface is bridge one. Point number six is done. Point number seven: connect your PC via wireless. Is it connected to the internet? So now I have to take out the connectivity from the cable and connect my PC via the wireless. So the first thing I have to do here is to go from network and sharing center. And uh, this one is the wired. Okay, I will disable it. So I don't want cable anymore. And I will go to the wireless enable. And uh, on the wireless now enable, I have to connect to the Microtech. So uh, I will click on Microtik. Actually, you don't see that because it's on another screen, but all I'm doing now, I'm just connecting to Microtik. And you will see it in a moment. It's identifying now. And uh, in a moment, we should be able to receive an IP address. And here we go. You can see now it is connected to Microtik. It shows over here. And that's the, uh, if we uh, look here to the SSID that I have uh, put on uh, the wireless, uh, if we go to the uh, wireless here, and the WLAN, and we said that the SSID is Microtech. So this is the name of the wireless. And you can see I have uh, get connected directly without any problem. And now you can see I'm only connected to the wireless. If I open the uh, command prompt and I try now to ping to google.com and we see that I'm able to go to the internet. And if I try to do IP config, and look, uh, this is the uh, IP that I received from the uh, wireless, 192.168.88.254. If I say ipconfig slash all to have more information, and here it is, you can see that you, you have also the DNS that we have defined, uh, which are 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4. And also it will show who is the DHCP server and all those information. You can see that uh, at this moment, because the WLAN is inside the bridge and also providing internet. Point number seven is done. And uh, with this point, I have explained to you what is the bridge and how the bridge works and what are the two different functions that the bridge can do. And also I have added all the internet ports and the wireless LAN inside the bridge. And uh, we have checked that it is working and it's providing internet or whatever you plug your cable to any of the ports or if you connect to the wireless you have internet service so this is what i wanted to show you in this lecture i hope it was informative for you and i will see you in the upcoming lecture